I consider myself to be an African from the southern part of Africa. Because I mean, if you take Europe, or you take whatever country, they are either Australians, or they are Italians, or they are Portuguese. I still have to hear the term of colored Portuguese, or colored Italian, or white Italian, or just Italians. So why can't we just be Africans in the southern part of Africa? That is my personal view. Ons oledig gouwe burger hierdie week op The Golden Years is die 74-jarige Joe Scaffers. As een inwoner van District 6, moes Joe die verskrikkelijke gedwonge verskuivings onder Suid-Afrikaanse groepsgebiede wet van 1966 aanskou. Vandaag is hy passievol daaroor om die publiek in te lig oor die vernietigende effect van die verlede sowel as die geneesingsproces wat nodig is om gemeenskapsgeest te herbou. Joe is ook een mensenrechte actiefis en een muzikant. Well, my name is Joe Scaffers. I am an educator at the District 6 Museum, born in District 6, of the soil itself. And having lived there and also out of the areas and the areas that we were forced to go to. And for 34 years I worked amongst the community in all the depressed areas where the community was forced to go to. District 6, you know, and Moulton, well everybody virtually talks about the happy days in District 6. Some people say it's a fantasy, but I, I really loved it. And I know that we had great times in District 6. Um, it's a caring, sharing community. Not to hide the fact that we had gangs and we had mayhem and there was uh, areas of degradation. And like any big city in the world, no matter where they are, whether it be London, Paris, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, there are areas of degradation and District 6 was no different. And for people, those areas was home. And this was the, the destruction of that that was taken away from them. And no matter what people tell me, people where they live, they were quite happy. Well, I grew up in an area called Bloomhoff Flats. Um, Bloomhoff Flats, which is not very far away from this, the museum. And I was born there in 1939. And we had moved in there when I believe when the cement was so wet. And Bloomhoff Flats in itself was like a self-contained unit. Um, we had our own clinic. We had our own library, we had our own community centre, um, we had beautiful uh, lawns and it was a very, very nice space in which you grew up, it was sheltered. Growing up, everybody looked after each other's kids because each one's child became somebody else's. So, as I always say, that, that uh, sparing the rod and sparing the child, in this case it was using that rod and then making the child understand that what they are doing is the wrong thing. And, it, and in a sense it worked for us. And it worked for me. I mean, I grew up a better person. It didn't destroy my psyche because it wasn't overdone. It was done when at the moment you call for it and you listen to your parents. But the one thread that went through the whole of District 6, and I must say this without fear of contradiction, was the thread of respect for each other as people and not because of your creed, your color, or your culture. And as a result, in my eyes, people learn to live together and coexist quite harmoniously. When the idea was mooted that District 6 was going to be turned into a, a white area, there was disbelief because, I mean, if you're looking at the amount of people that was living in District 6, 
And I suppose I was one of those skeptics who said, where are they going to put us all? I mean, it's ridiculous. Then the reality started setting. The people asked, now why don't you stand up against it? So all I'm good saying is stand up. Stand up with what? They had the armed, they had the arms, the police, they had the army, they had the navy. And what did you have? You had a voice that you tried to make you heard. And nobody was paying attention to that voice. You had people like our parents, who were always, were always brainwashed from a very early age already. And people became subservient. And in many cases, people tried to stand up, but of course, the minute you stood up to them, you were immediately branded communist. You could be locked up. And all these little things added to the fears of people. And I think this is one of the reasons why uh, they were able to get people out of these respective e areas so easily. And when they took you out of these areas, they didn't take you out as a community. No. Working on your almost Nazi ideology of divide and rule, they then started splitting people firstly into different race groups, then put them into different areas, into these different townships, and then entrench them in these townships where means of railway lines, highways, rivers and industrial areas. So much so that even now, almost 20 years down democracy, due to that intense brainwashing it was done from grandparents, characters to parents to children, you find that the thinking is still, this is my area, that is your area, you don't belong there, I don't belong over there. That's a mindset that should have changed because democracy means you can live where you want to if you can afford to. But unfortunately, due to that intense brainwashing and the separation of areas, you find this becomes a very, very difficult thing to overcome. To respect each other. My name is Noor Ibrahim. Now, Noor means light. I was born in District 6. Uh, well, there is now more amper 70 years ago. And I think it's one of the most that you have to begin. 87. Now, to begin the uh, bulldoze District 6, before they come to 200 photos, that was just a hobby. I was a photographer, it was a hobby for me. I had to do articles in the Koran. So, in 1987, I did a great article from all my photos. To 1992, that was no apart of the year. Ne? To phone three men for me, well, I had a lot of people who know Dr. Combring and Pastor Stan Abram, they had a part of the museum. To phone for me to be able to sell for me, no, well, I didn't know it. I said, I want you to see, but I said, for what? I said, for photos, man. Anyway, to come along with the history on, and I said, I want all my photos, and I said, I want to see all the books. To sell for me, I said, this man, this is the man that I want to see. I want to see the man. Twee weken ik ze bissen en en die prikkelen en of ik hier al mijn foto's kan brengen en zoet ik in Wolfenraad moet ik museum ga je niet foto's geven ik zeg je niet met foto's of wat er daar tijd District 6 voor mij was always a passion and I had a very good friend by the name of Vincent Colby and he was a musician and we always used to get together and then he used to tell me why don't you come down to the museum um, you've lived in the area, you know the stories. Come and tell people what happened here. So I used to come down on Saturdays to come and volunteer and give them my time. And when I retired from the city council, I then decided, well, I've got time on my hands now, and that's when I came to. We were still volunteering. And then Noah was going to Mecca, and he was going away for quite a time, and then they asked me, why don't you just become permanent here? Why don't you just work and stay here? And that's when I, I then started working permanently at the museum. When they cleared all the people out of District 6, it was officially the largest concentration of people of color. And when they cleared it out, it then made the city of Cape Town virtually a white city where people of color could come and work, but they weren't allowed to stay. Under the Land Restitution Act of 1994, people throughout the country have been given the right to apply for restitution. 
District 6 is no different and already 140 odd people have moved in. A moratorium has been set at by the end of 2014. There should be between two and 4,000 homes completed. And that's to turn the city of Cape Town back into a city of people, not into a city of one race, which it eventually became through the nationalist government. Please feel free to walk around. Anything you see you don't understand, come and speak to me about it. And uh, wherever you're traveling, near or far, may you all have a safe journey back home. And all of you very, very fair skin, please put a lot of sunblock on. You're not gonna get close to what I am here. <laughs> To see the District 6 Museum was one of my highlights. I was impressed that he was so easy for me to understand because <laughs> English is not my language. Uh, so and it, he talked with, uh, you know, uh, living into it. I don't know how to express it, but uh, I think it will. He he feel he feels for it. I uh, was born in South Africa, 1938 and lived in a small town, the Ria near Genadendal. And then I later went to South Peninsula High School in Cape, near the Cape, in Deep River, and to Cape Town University. And then later got a scholarship to go to Holland, where I got my doctorate degree, and later went to, for a few years in America, and now I'm a professor at Aarhus University in Denmark. It is the first time ever at this museum. We've just recently read the book called District 6, so it was very fascinating to come and see more about it here. And I think it's a fantastic idea that this is being kept for future generations. But within that Cape Flats, there were depressive, windy, sandy, Port Jackson covered areas. And it's in these areas that people of color were placed and put into barrack-like structures which were rolled out in their hundreds to take the masses who had been sifted out of their respective areas. And when, of course, moved us out of District 6, they then started systematically demolishing the homes demolishing the homes that we could never ever come back again. Typical street in District 6 called Richmond Street. You can see a very busy street, you can almost hear the noises coming out of the street. Now this is Richmond Street in 1961. This is Richmond Street in 1984. I can't get... Only your church remains where the white folk live. Everywhere else, total desolation, isolation and silence. When the area was declared as a white on the 11th of February 1966, um, we were still in Blue Mopeds. And I know that my mother and my father celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary in that flat as well. My father was a very quiet gentleman. He didn't have much to say, but my mother was the or well, they call it the sarang, yeah, it's, she was the one that, that called the shots. And I mean, she was, she's very good at what she did, she was very caring, had a heart of gold, and that went for my dad as well. And I think we developed the same qualities from them, because all of us were, were brought up in a Catholic home, so we went to schooling, church, and we were brought up in a very, very strong um, culture of religion. And I think that also where we grew up in that house, um, sport played a major part in our lives. My dad loved his cricket. So sport became an overriding factor. And sport, of course, nurtured some other things in you. It needed to nurture you how to, to take defeat as well as give and to win matches as well as being able to lose matches. And that sort of also helped me tremendously through my life that you can't always be winning. You've got to learn to lose. And losing only makes you stronger to make you determined to win again. And that for me was important. Joe's a kennis van Kaapstad en die se geschiedenis strek wijd. As a young sien het hy saam met sy broers en sisters die stad verken, die die berg opgestap en langs die strand gekamp. Vandaag voor de eerste keer in zijn leven klim Joe op de Kaapstadse besichtigingsbus om de stad van zijn geboorte van uit een ander oogpunt te ondervind. My, my dad and my mom were born in this part of the world, known as the Boerkaap. And they were lived on top of Long Market Street. 
which had absolutely fabulous views of the whole of the city of Cape Town, Robben Island in the distance, the Ottentotolan Mountains, and a panoramic view of the, the mountains itself. And with the forced removals, my grandmother was also put out, uh, out of her home. And inside the city hall, there used to be some beautiful balls. Even the Queen Elizabeth's her 21st birthday was held in this. That is where Nelson Mandela made his speech from, from that balcony. On his release, he came to do this, and this whole square was covered by thousands and thousands of people. Where Stable Mountain itself, you had various spaces that you could go up. You had uh, Around the corner you had porcupine butter, you had Blankwater ravine. The front here we had uh, Africa ravine, India ravine. And we should come down the front here after going around the top section, under the cable station. And it was amusing to us to see mountaineers with their ropes and all climbing up. And we used to walk up here bare feet or with tackies on and do the climbing of this of Table Mountain as such. So this always has, and this space also has a lot of um, good memories for me. Behind me, of course, is the West Coast. And then right behind Signal Hill, you can see uh, Robin Island sticking its head out there. And Atlantis was also created as part of the apartheid legacy, where people were promised that they'd be getting industries and will be uh, created out there and they'll be having jobs and this never materialized and the people are sitting in abject poverty now out in that part of the world because of promises that were made by the then nationalist government and it's become also a place with a lot of crime unemployment and it's so sad to think that some of those people were placed 45 50 kilometers outside of the city of cape town and places where they lived like gurud and of course various other areas that people were taken out of. Being on a bus and being a tourist in your own city is absolutely amazing. Because I think a lot of people should be doing this. You know, one always walks around and you just focus on where you're going to, but you never have the opportunity of being able to look around. I don't know how long it's all to be. Nog jaren samen kan wees die die is mee in haar service. Dat was met, hoe moet ik nou dood gaan? Ik heb ook met mijn vrouw in Bloema Flats. She lived two blocks away from me. So I think that must have been one of the easiest courtships in the world, because it's just one block away. And you find out quite a few of the guys in Bloema Flats, and that applied to all my, well, most of my brothers. They all got married. They said within the camp. What's for supper? There was such a little folk, and there were, of course, men. So there was always this intermarriage inside the, the flats itself. I'm Audrey, married to Joe, Joe Scaffers. And I'm now finally retired, whereas Joey is still happily working at the museum. You know, I saw him playing badminton, and I also played a bit of badminton and table tennis. And I think we bonded very well, you know. Uh, our relationship just blossomed that today I am his wife. And I'm not sorry for being uh, the woman that he had chosen. You know, we both have a lot of things in common, both Joey and I. But he is an entertainer, whereas I'm just the opposite. Not that I'm a party pooper or anything like that, but I prefer to be at home. I've always been a home girl. Well, the thing is, I went on a bus up to the red bus. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. The open, the open, uh, open top. And I think that's a time of trip that everybody must do at some stage or other. It is really, really great. Is it? Hi. Hello. 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 Hello, yeah. Oh no, Joe and I, we are just, <laughs> excuse me, retirement village. We are just, uh, retirement village. Joe was just, we were just chatting about a day that we had, and how was your day, Joanne? I'm Joanne, I'm Joe's youngest child, only girl, 
three elder brothers before me. My fondest memories, I think, was him coming home and there was always a chocolate in his bag <laughs> for me and he would put it on top of the piano. He just has to keep touching people the way he does. Sometimes I walk down the street and I, there's a lot of similarities in our threats, in our physical threats, and people will look at me and go, are you maybe Joe Scaff, is, are you related? And I'd say, yes, it's my dad, with like this big, proud smile on my face, because I've never come across people who go, you know, who scowl or frown and go, are you Joe's daughter? It's always like this biggest, you know, biggest smile you could ever see on someone else's face. And then to think that that's my dad that touched someone like that, no matter what he did, I mean, it could have just been a simple gesture or a kind word, or because that's my dad. It's very short, sweet, but it's felt inside. <laughs> Who's this? That's, yes. your, that's your mommy. That's Audrey. Well, I'll even look at my daughter. <laughs> that's her physique. True story. Oh, you're a carambreco. Show me that as well. Did you get that? That's our scaffers legs. That's why you dated mommy. Oh, I know you, Tata. Tell me now, where did you get married? No, uh, we got married in St. Mary's Cathedral. The only the best was uh, good for your mother. We took the cathedral. Was she get married no, in white? No local. Of course, you got married in white. Hey, <laughs> what is that? Did he? Mm. No, 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 no. There was oh, no such a chance. Oh, uh, just checking, just checking. I'm never on the photos because I take the photos. Oh, that's more. That's the problem. Uh, this is the car that, that you had when you raced mommy up to St. Monica's in, in Bunker. Yeah. <laughs> like the Jan was born. Yeah. I was yeah. sitting in the back, I remember this car. This is Table Mountain, mm -hmm. and I was up there today with a red bus. But we didn't go right to the top, but this was taken right to the top. And you can see the view of the city. Where's the waterfront? The waterfront's down there. The waterfront wasn't even existing at that time yet. There was no waterfront as we know it. That's Mount Pa. And where's this? In Sirius. This is, this is a nice family photo of my... You know, in Joey's case, it's, it's pointless me standing in Mount Joey Mountain to stop with. You know, at that age, you should actually be... Now, you should be at home enjoying your retirement with me. But if you must retire, you must stop work at the museum. Well, how much more can you do in your garden? I think you will just get older by the day. When I look at, you know, spaces like the castle, which is 300 years old, I don't see any reason why the District 6 Museum shouldn't be lasting this long. Because it's a space of memory, and it's also a space where people can tell their stories, and they can come, even your younger generation, they also going to get older. And if they've got stories that they heard from people like myself and others, they can then pass it on, because in your early years, there was nothing written down, it was word of mouth. Then maybe word of mouth is where we're going to end up again at the end of the day. And that for me is, this museum is always going to be a place of education, of culture and of history. As jy betrokken by ons wil raak en jou stories wil deel, moet jy asseblief een e-post stuur aan thegoldenyears.sabc.co.za Jy kan ook kommentaar lever op ons Facebook blad The Golden Years op SABC2 of tweet at Golden Years SABC2.